The International Association for Near-Death Studies presents NDE Radio, a weekly exploration of near-death experiences and similar encounters with the other side. Now, here's your host, Lee Whitting. Welcome to NDE Radio, brought to you by IANS, the International Association for Near-Death Studies. I'm your host, Lee Whitting. One of the most ignored, least discussed topics in the field of NDE studies is the existence of DNDEs, that is, distressing near-death experiences. Despite scary reports and dark descriptions of NDEs gone wrong, so to speak, most folks continue to believe that NDEs are always positive and filled with the love of God. Our guest today, Blake Brewer, is a graduate of the University of Central Missouri with a focus on psychology. While Blake was in college, he suffered from an accident which led to a distressing near-death experience. Blake became interested in NDE studies following his experience and attempts to share with others how a negative NDE can be positive and beneficial. Blake reports his DNDE changed his life for the better and revitalized his spirit. Blake, welcome to NDE Radio. Good morning, Lee. How are you? I'm fine. It's good to hear your voice. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm great. I'm excited. Hey, um, I appreciate you having me on the show. And for anyone that's listening now or later, I hope you're also having this morning. Oh, well, thanks so much. Uh, Blake, uh, let's begin by telling the audience about the details of your accident. Sure. Um, okay, so I am, uh, I'm not very old. I'm pretty young. And um, I was in college, which was, um, this happened about three years ago. I'm 25 mm-hmm. now. Um, I was in school, uh, finishing up school, my bachelor's, and um, I was um, a longboarder. If you're not familiar with longboarding, um, it originated in Hawaii in the mid-60s. Um, surfers wanted to continue surfing without uh, waves, you know, when there wasn't any swell. So they pretty much took a skateboard and made it longer so you could go down big hills, which is a lot of fun. But it's also very dangerous, and we'll get into that here in a second. Um, So anyway, um, I would take it, you know, I would longboard to class and everything. And this one day, um, I went out on this hill, and, uh, I I mean, I just wiped out uh, pretty badly. Um, Anyway, after the uh, accident, I I had a pretty bad concussion. Um, I went back home, ended up going over to a friend. This was about an hour later. And then um, I started feeling lightheaded at my friend's house, and it ultimately uh, I passed out. Now, I have to, like, uh, I'll tell the story from my side of what happened, and then I'll, I'll tell you guys what happened um, in this existence, you know, there, at my friend's house. So Very good. after I passed out, um, I was... I didn't have any kind of -of out-of-body experience. I was just immediately thrusted into this uh, black void. There was nothing around. Uh, It was just infinite uh, nothingness. It's hard to describe uh, with the words we use here. But um, I feel like the majority of people have experienced passing out before, and this was just completely different. Um, The strangest part of the whole experience was I was unconscious in this black void, but I still, I was still uh, conscious completely. Like I had my thoughts and everything, um, but no body, obviously. So um, I was just in this blackness, and I knew, and I just knew it was death, um, and it was just so terrifying. Um, I. Uh, I don't know how long I was in this void because, um, like, time didn't really exist. But hmm. um, it, it felt like a really long time. So anyway, during this whole experience, you know, I was just terrified. I was grappling with the idea of me dying and not finishing things here on Earth. And um, like I said, it was it was very scary um, until eventually my entire experience, I can't put – a an amount of time on it that it lasted, but um, the actual events in it are pretty brief. Um, So I was in this void. I had uh, all this fear and terror, and then that continued for an unknown amount of time. And then eventually um, I felt this 
presence of a being, um, an, another uh, entity like in this void with me. Um, the being started talking to me uh, telepathically. Obviously, there was no words or anything. I just received its thoughts, and I it was clear that it was um, not my own thoughts. Like it was it was uh, this being trying to speak with me. And the being was, you know, pretty calm and collected, even though I was in a panic. And um, the um, it just started raining. Like, I hope that's not distracting. I'm in my car. But um, <laughs> the being was talking to me and said that I could choose to die if I wanted to. It was really calm. It said I could choose to die or that I didn't have to. And I was in a panic. And I wanted, you know, out of this experience. And I immediately said that um, I didn't want to die. And right when I uh, had that conscious thought that I did not want to die, I woke up at my friend's house and they took me to the hospital. The EMT did. Mm. So um, now uh, what happened on Earth while I was gone um so I passed out of my friend's house. Um, I Apparently, I was turning blue, and I wasn't breathing. Uh, my friends called the EMTs. They showed up. They said it, it. I never got a clear answer what happened to me. Um, the EMTs said that it looked like some kind of cardiac arrest. Uh, once I got to the hospital, the doctors checked me out. I went through an MRI and everything. Uh, they said there was no damage. They said that um, it was... Uh, concussion of some sort, and they couldn't explain uh, the problems with my heart. And then I was released, and I was totally fine. Mm-hmm. Um, now, after the experience, um, you know, a lot of things changed, obviously. Um, I've read a lot of reports about d and since my accident, and it, if there's anyone listening that's had one of these, um, they can be pretty horrendous. And I'm, I almost feel lucky that mine... Mine was very scary, but it wasn't, um, you know, terrible, um, like some of these I read. But it did, it did cause me a lot of, uh, stress and anxiety for years. Um, I, I was really afraid of death after this, and, um, I really struggled with it for a while. Um, until one day, I was on the internet, I was kind of, uh, surfing the web and reading, reading articles, and I came across um, someone talking about Raymond Moody's Life After Life. And I was, um, it kind of struck me because I had, I grew up Catholic um, in my youth and I was really involved in uh, my religion and everything. And I loved it. It was a great time of my life. When I got into college, uh, I was exposed to different kinds of thoughts and um, I got away from, from my upbringing. Um, and actually, I um, was atheist for uh, uh, a while there in college. So anyway, back to after the experience, um, I came across Raymond Moody's book, and it kind of struck me. Um, it, it, it caught uh, hey, my interest. Blake, let, let me stop you there for a second, because you just said mm-hmm. something very interesting. You were raised Catholic, and I think you told me earlier yeah. you were pretty intense about it until maybe the age of 18. So this yeah, is four right. years later. You you may have even become an atheist at this point. Now, when you had this uh, experience and this fear, did you did it connect to you in any way with either uh, the theology of the Catholic Church, heaven and hell, or did it connect with your atheism? I mean, did, how did uh, how, how did those two points of view and your DNDE interconnect? Yeah, so um, while I was in this void, um, the thought of hell never crossed my mind or anything like that. Um, in fact, I wasn't thinking much about any of uh, anything spiritual or religious. It was more of just a uh, frenzy and a panic. Um, mm. I did think at a point that, um, you know, I was dying and that... Um, <laughs> There was a slight moment, Lee, where I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm dying, and I'm conscious right now of my death, 
Like, clearly, there's something else going on here. I did have a <laughs> yes. slight moment like that, yeah. Um, this, is, this is beyond uh, atheism, obviously, if there's an afterlife. Sure. Yes, exactly. So let, let, me, did, let me also ask you uh, at this point, what, how, you, uh, how would you interpret that voice? Was it angelic? Was it demonic? Was it good or evil? Was it godlike? It, was it, what was it? Was, it was, oh gosh, this, this is so hard to explain. And I've, you know, I've been listening to the show for a long time and I've heard this countless of times, but it's so, these are so tricky to explain in, uh, like earthly words, words we use now. Uh, mm-hmm. but I'll give it my best. So it was not, it didn't sound like it was male or female. It wasn't, uh, demonic or anything like that. And I, I would almost say it wasn't angelic. Um, it was just, oh man, this is tough. It was, it was just, um, it was just a voice and it was calm. It was mm. very, um, Oh gosh, how do I explain this? It was almost like it it was trying to calm me down in the moment and you uh-huh. know almost make me feel like this is happening but it's going to be okay kind of thing. So did you take a uh did it calm you? I mean, you were terrified at first. Did, did, did just hearing bit, that um, voice yeah, I mean, it, it it was a panic up until the very end, until I, you know, uh, got out of the experience. But you know, when I heard the voice talking to me, it did um, it did calm me down a little bit. Um, I felt like I had a little bit of leverage in the situation. You know, this this being was giving me this choice, and uh, now I could choose to leave. Mm. Um, let me ask you this: Was it? Yeah. Is there any chance that it was a an alternate part of yourself that was doing <laughs> that was the voice rather than it's another funny. being altogether? It's funny you say that. Um, I thought of so after this whole experience, you know, I right off the bat, I didn't think I had an NDE. I didn't even know what an NDE was, but I tried to explain it away. You know, I was like, oh, clearly, I was suffering from a concussion. This wasn't real. Um, it wasn't until, you know, research and years later that I kind of accepted this whole thing. But yes, while I was, um, in that void, um, the voice, it, this, this is so strange and I can't explain this, but it did feel like it was almost like my higher self at a time. Um, and I wish I could explain that further and what that meant, but I, I just can't. Um, it did feel like I was talking to maybe myself for a second that was, it, it, it's strangely because I felt like I was talking to my higher self for a second, but it was also separate. Like it was clearly not my own consciousness, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. It does. It does. Let me ask yeah. you this too. To, uh, this may seem a little off off the point for the second sure. but um now that you're back and i would say clearly not an atheist anymore wh- what oh, do you think about reincarnation yeah so i um my views on uh spirituality and religion drastically changed after this and plus after all the material i've studied up on um it it altered my perception quite a bit um, I definitely think reincarnation is real, personally. Um, I can't speak for everyone, but um, I definitely believe in it. Um, I believe that we can be, uh, you know, if, if you subscribe to the idea that anything's possible with God in the afterlife, reincarnation would definitely be an option then. Mm. So when... The voice said you can either die now or go back. Really, the implication is you could either go back to the life you were leading or you could go on to a future life. Right. Um, or I could, I, you know, when, when the voice told me that I could, you know, continue on into uh, death, I don't really know what would have happened afterwards. I, I have a sense that it would have gotten better. Um, it was really scary at the time, 
but the voice was calming, and I had the feeling that it wasn't going to leave me. And so um, I think if I chose to stay, well, obviously we wouldn't be having this conversation, but um, I think it would have gotten better for me. Yeah, I think it would have been a positive ending. And it was a positive ending. After all this, it ended up being something that I benefited from. I, I have had the feeling from time to time in talking to people who've had both good and bad NDEs that NDEs, while they have a universal um, uh element to them are also sure. very particularly personally designed for the person who's experiencing them that there are Extremely. details yeah that that um make each one of these so unique and so um important to the person who's involved for instance this has changed your whole well you tell us how it's changed your outlook on life yeah so um I won't give you all the details, but after my experience, like I said, it was it was it negatively impacted me for a second. Um, like I said, I was scared of death. Um, I was trying to dismiss this thing that happened to me as you know something of in my imagination. And then, like I mentioned uh, earlier in the show, I was on the internet. I came across Raymond Moody's book Life After Life, and it grabbed my interest. I read that, and then after. I <laughs> After I read that book, it just unleashed this unquenchable thirst about NDEs for me. And then I went on to uh, Proof of Heaven by Alexander, and then I read 90 Minutes in Heaven by Piper, and on and on and on. And then um, after reading all these materials, even though um, the experiences I was reading about were positive, there was over um, there was factors in it that were overlapping that happened in my experience and their experience, such as uh, the void or the tunnel, and then the uh, telepathic communication. So um, after I read this enough, you know, I, I started thinking this this really did happen. I, I was really there at this place. I can't deny this anymore. And then I came to a point in my life where I thought, okay, this bad thing happened. It negatively impacted me. I can choose to, uh, you know, dwell in its negativity and be fearful, or maybe this happened for a reason, which I strongly believe it did, and I can learn from this and try to grow. And so that's what ended up happening. Um, I, you know, I had to go to therapy for all this. It, it was a mess, but um, I'm really glad it happened to me now. I am. It got me, um, I don't want to say back on track, but mm -hmm. it, it nudged me um in a way where I kind of redeveloped my spirituality, and that that has no value on it. Right. Um, well, you were really you were great. studying or majoring in psychology even yeah. before this happened. Uh, um. So this, I mean, this would really play into deal. You know, if you in going into the field of psychology, dealing with people's fears and people's depressions. I mean, this would Definitely. give you a first-hand uh, experience of it without having to become, you know, uh, well, t tell us a little about the therapy. You you went to th into therapy because of the NDE? Yeah, um, it, it wasn't, I guess, in a roundabout way, it was for the NDE, but it was mainly for uh, the fear of death that I developed after this. You know, a lot of times it's common with a, with a yeah, positive NDE, that the uh, experiencer is not afraid of death, but it was the opposite situation uh, in my experience. And yes. I was afraid of death, so I had to I had to cope with, uh, you know, uh, my mortality and what it meant and kind of uh, go through my experience and uh, realize that, you know, it, it was more of a, of a uh, rejuvenating uh, experience for my spirit. So... Mm. So That's you were really talking nice. to a, you were talking to a psychologist, presumably one who had not had an NDE. How did how did they take your story? How did they <laughs> react to it? Um, they, they were great. They were great. Uh, they listened. Was it a, to me was it a man or a woman? It was a man. Yeah. Okay. He he was great. Um, he he was very open about the idea. I did get a sense um, that he may not have believed me. Um, mm. Which is understandable, you know, no ill feelings towards him. Um, but I did, I did get that sense. But he was, he was very um, open and accepting, 
about my experience um, and helped me work through a lot of stuff. Um, Lee, I was going to mention this. I, I thought about this after we had emailed a little bit, and this, this is an interesting tidbit. Um, so I like to think that there are no coincidences and that things happen for a reason. Um, mm-hmm. after my experience. So um, while I got out of the hospital, the doctors told me I was wearing a helmet when I had my accident, and it caused, it prevented a, a major accident. Like, it would have been very badly if I wasn't wearing my helmet. Um, yes. So they told me, you know, the helmet saved your life and everything. Um, later on, um, towards the end of college, I had a friend that would also longboard, and uh, he he did not wear a helmet. And I told him, you know, hey, I had this experience. You you should be safe and wear a helmet. Um, anyway, um, I think a lot of the viewers will take this, you know, as kind of a sad ending, but it's not. Um, my friend actually got into an accident. He wasn't wearing a helmet, and, it, and he died. Um, yeah, sad story. But um, I it, it was almost like my experience was... Um, trying to serve dual purposes, you know, to help me and then also warn my friend, um, which ultimately didn't happen. But he ended up coming to visit uh, me and my girlfriend, you know, in, in our dreams later. So he's, he's in a better place. He's doing okay. Oh, what did he say? Well, he, he came to um, my girlfriend. Was, I was friends with this guy, and uh, my girlfriend was really good friends with this guy. And he came to her in, in her dream. And, um, <laughs> it's funny cause all the, um, all the factors on, uh, near death experience, they line up perfectly with her dream. So, um, she was in this place. It seems more real than, uh, the reality we're in right now. Uh, my friend spoke to her. He told her that he's okay and that everything would be fine. Um, you know, they embraced for a little bit and then he left mm-hmm. and that was it. Did, did, uh, in other words, she shared a bit of his reality on the other side? I Yes, I don't doubt it one bit. So how did that affect um, it, her? It gave her so much comfort. She was really um, upset, obviously, when he passed away. But sure. um, after that experience, you know, she talked to me. And I had, at the time, um, which I don't know if this is a coincidence again, I was reading about um, an NDE and um, secondary, like, sort of near-death experiences, you know, where someone will be um, at a deathbed and see something or obviously have a dream. I've had that experience myself. (laughs) Oh, wonderful. I didn't even know. But, um, yeah, same thing. And I told her about that. I was like, hey, look at this. Um, This sounds exactly like what happened to you. And it was was really comforting for her. Yeah. Hmm. And um, and then did you did he appear to you in your dream, too? I did have a couple dreams about him. Um, nothing as intense as she had. That was that was really the major one. Um, in my dreams, he was more of just um, a character, you know, and I would be concerned for him. But um, you know, I had a feeling that he was going to be okay. But the one that uh, my girlfriend had was was the really big one. Um, mm. Now, why? Nice. It, in looking back on this. Why do you think your personalized NDE was a distressing one? <laughs> so this is something I've been trying to figure out for a while, and I may never figure this out, um, <laughs> and I accept that. That's okay. Um, I feel like if <laughs> if it was pleasant, I feel like I would have stayed. There's no doubt uh, mm-hmm. from all these experiences that I've li- listened to, um, I probably would have would have been like yeah let's continue along this road and see where this takes me and i i guess i would have died um but uh the the distressing part of it almost made me uh realize what i have here and um where i need to go so it it kind of showed me again um what i personally believe is important in this life and um it really benefited me in the long, you know, after years looking, well, I say years, three or four years after this happened, you know, looking back, um, mm. yeah, I wouldn't change a thing. So you're not uncomfortable with the notion of death at this point? 
Um, I'm not going to lie to anybody. It still upsets me a little. Like, when I think about death in my mortality, um, it gets me slightly anxious, but nowhere close to what it was. Um, mm-hmm. I think if I would have had a positive NDE, there would be no fear of death at all. Um, but I am a lot less afraid of death than I was drastically. Right. But you know the potential for uh, for fear on the other side. Do you think Do you think the fear came from the, that sense of isolation, or was it the lack of light? That was it darkness, or was it just aloneness that it was so scary? Was, ooh, it's hard to. It was both. Um, not so much the dark. I guess it was the aloneness. Now that you mention it, um, I just didn't understand or could comprehend what was happening. Um, mm-hmm. I thought it was death, but I wasn't sure what happens next. And I think it was a fear of being there forever. You know, I thought that I might just be in this nothingness uh, forever. And that, that, was, was, that was scary. That, that's your Catholic hell coming out. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, but but I, um, I think if I didn't have such a fear of death and then I went through this experience, I think it would have been different. So in other words, what I'm saying is I think probably a part of me, you know, created that neg- negative space, mm-hmm. at least to a degree. Mm-hmm. There's a book, I don't know if you've encountered Nancy Evans Bush book on uh, Dancing Past the Dark, which is all about uh, distressing NDEs. But if you I haven't, you should look, look, take a look at it. It's, it's quite good. I will. I'll look into and, that. I just finished... Uh, I just finished another book, so I need to pick another one up. So that's it. That's the Nancy, one. E- Nancy Evans Bush. She's a, a, a strong part of Ian's history. I mean, she is. She's uh, done lots and lots of good things for for Ian's. Um, there was something else I was going to ask you about. Oh, um, sure. You, what are you going to do with your psychology education? Are you working with uh, people in a in, to, to help them? Yeah, so after I came back and had my experience, um, I realized how important uh, love is. You know, I always try to be a good person up to that point, but after that, it just really stuck out like a sore thumb for me. Um, so uh, I still, like I mentioned before, I'm still really young. Um, I just have my bachelor's, but um, I'm in the social work field right now. Um, mm-hmm. I work with uh, foster, uh, I, I do foster care, case managing. Right now, um, but yes, Lee, I have thought about going back to school. It's definitely on the table. Um, I would, I'm leaning toward uh, possibly doing uh, like chaplain work in a hospital. Mm, it's it's yeah. very, very rewarding. Uh, and as a matter of fact, I'm sure if you go, if you went to your local hospital and just with your even with your background, volunteered uh, to visit. Um, patients in the sure, hospital sure. very quickly you would catch catch on as to uh, um, you know how how important that is or a uh, volunteering yeah. as as a hospice worker same thing yeah I've thought about doing that I've had a couple of clients over my few years in the work field that um, have been terminal uh, not in the foster care but my job prior to this it was with adults and a couple no. of them uh, were terminal and um, they were my favorite clients to talk to. Um, and they were really positive, too. It's yeah. an interesting time to talk to someone that's walking through that threshold. Um, it's 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 fascinating. It's a real gift to be with someone uh, as they prepare to die and, and to be with them when they do die. Blake, yeah. unfortunately, we, we are out of time for today. Ah. It was a, it was a thank, pleasure, Lee. Thank you. This was terrific. And uh, I want to uh, so I want to thank you. Blake Brewer, for sharing your story uh, of your uh, DNDE and and the effects it had on you. Um, I'm glad you had me. (laughs) If the audience would like to listen again to this or any of our past shows, just go to our website at nderadio.org. And for more information about the work of IANS and the upcoming conference in Denver, check out their website, iands.org. And tune in next Monday, 11 a.m. Eastern, for more NDE Radio. This is Lee Whitting saying thanks for listening.